While I was reviewing the footage of my original fume extractor, which still does the bare minimum expected of it, I stumbled across something dangerous. Another YouTuber with a good idea and too much time on his hands. This guy had built a fume extractor that looked professional. Clean lines, completely portable, something you could imagine even OSHA approving. His fume extractor looked like it was on LinkedIn, while mine was still stuck on MySpace with a blurry profile photo. And suddenly, my perfectly adequate box with ambitions started to feel emotionally inferior. Now, to be clear, my original extractor works. It moves air, it removes fumes, it does the job. But this other one looked like it paid taxes and had a five-year plan. I could not let that stand. So naturally, instead of doing literally anything from my massive to-do list, I decided I had to make a new one from scratch. Inspired by dozens of wasted hours watching others magically turn out intricate designs in minutes, I decided how hard can it be? I had several clear goals in mind. Functionality, extraction efficiency, uh, who am I kidding? I just didn't want it looking like something I rescued from a high school robotics club dumpster. While you watch the invigorating print time-lapse, I will tell you about today's sponsor, Worse Help. You might have heard of their parent company, BetterHelp, but unlike them, worse help don't pretend to hire licensed professionals. They state it plainly. They'll pay 15 bucks to the same guy who mows their office lawns. He will happily listen to you while taking a morning dump. They will respect zero privacy laws, and they will definitely sell your data to the highest bidder. So if you want to completely destroy your mental health and ruin your credit score, contact worse help today and take advantage of this unique offer. Now onto assembly. Surprisingly, on my first iteration, everything fit perfectly. No, of course it didn't. I wasted more filament on this than a teenager with unfettered access to a parent's credit card. Naturally, I reused the same cabin air filter. Two came in the original order, and I wasn't about to waste $17. Next, to select the perfect fans, I first analyzed the hydrostatic pressure required to maintain collimated laminar flow given the exact cross-sectional area. I'm kidding, of course, I didn't do any of that AI-generated word salad. I simply took my original fans and hoped I can beat physics into submission. Installation was straightforward, wiring was clean, airflow direction was double-checked, because I'm trying to make a fume extractor, not a fume distributor. Then I connected the USB cable, which made the entire project look only marginally less like deep thought from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Flip the lights on first, because illumination is important for morale. Next, test in Lewis Rossman patented fan spin. A moment of suspense, and it works! Which already puts this project well above my average. Now, the only test that actually matters. Heat up the iron, waste some perfectly good flux, and watch the smoke vanish like I just realized it owes child support. So is this fume extractor any better? Arguably, yes. Does it do exact same thing as my old one? Absolutely. Was it necessary? Absolutely not. But if there is one thing this channel is about, it's tackling problems that were already solved in a more complicated way, powered entirely by unjustified confidence and weaponized incompetence. Thanks for watching.